there are a lot of great podcasts out there. And one of the things that I've been doing is recommending a podcast at the end of each episode. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end because I guarantee you the podcast I recommend you're going to love. I've known this young lady for years, and this is the first time I actually got a chance to sit down and have a conversation with her. And I was very impressed, and I found out so many different things about her that I didn't know. She's a writer, and it's given her the opportunity to connect with people and spread joy and affection through her words. She's been writing for as long as she can remember, and in August of 2018, she self-published her first book. Her next book was intended to be more lighthearted and provide expected mothers with some comic relief. And you'll understand what we mean later on in the episode. The publication of her first children's picture book took place in August of 2022. Seems like she likes August a lot. (laughs) But apart from writing, she also facilitates workshops dubbed Writing to Heal which focuses on the relationship between writing and mental health. Her specialization is a method she calls intuitive writing, in which she writes original poetry and tales as presents for other people. I am excited to have on this episode, Lindsay Pope. Enjoy the conversation. Coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios, Harford County Living presents Conversations with Rich Bennett. Come on, you're faster than with me. Guys, hey, yeah. we're we're I got to Oh, man, you already on. said it. I was going to ask her. She remembered the date. I am sitting here today with a young lady that. God, I wanted to get on the podcast before COVID. That's when your first book came out, Fan of Faith, right? Yes, right. Um, And I think we couldn't do it because of COVID, if Mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Yep. Or did you get pregnant then? (laughs) I can't remember. Yeah, I was like one or two. It was like both both, both (laughs) of them. So I have Lindsay Pope here, and we're going to be talking about her latest book. But before we get into her latest book, Sheldon's Time, I want to talk about her other two books because she's written i thought she only wrote one but she's written two other books so the first one was found in faith yes that's right yeah now okay i know it wasn't about the found in faith ministries no Mm -mm. so what exactly was found in faith about yeah so we do have the story um actually alicia hamilton who founded found in faith ministries her story is in there so it is a part of it um but the yeah so but the majority of the book is actually it's i i sort of um Compare it to Chicken Soup for the Soul. So it's a collection of just very short, inspirational it. stories and poems and it, things that I wrote when I was actually going through a very difficult time myself. And I, what I was writing was actually really helping me heal. Okay. And when I read them back, I thought, oh, well, that's actually nice. And I just wanted to share them out with more people. So Now, is that book still available? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's still on Amazon. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Now, was that self-published or yes. did you go through a publisher? Yes. All of my books so far have been self-published. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that one, Found in Faith, how, how long is that book? How many pages is that? Oh, that one's actually, it's a very short, easy read. So okay. if you're looking for something to either read like, you know, in the morning or at night before you go to bed or just throughout, you know, you have 10 minutes throughout the day and you just want a quick little pick me up read right. it's the kind of book that you can read all in one sitting so it's only about i want to say it's about 35 pages long so it's it's very short but it sounds like it's a book that you can read over and over again because it's got inspirational stories in yeah like hopefully. the chicken soup yeah i love the chicken soup books yeah i do too i'm a huge fan yeah. so yeah you don't throw them away it, it, they're they're pick me ups right exactly yeah right. so i gotta make sure i put the links in the show no- or in the uh, show notes for that book and then what was the second book? So the second book is called Wisdom from the Womb, and I wrote that while I was pregnant. So it actually started off as a series of fictional conversations between my daughter and I, but she's in the womb. So that is, yeah. oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, and the funniest thing is that now that, of course, I know her, she, she'll be three in November. I it's it's her personality. It's the baby in the book is very sassy and the way that she speaks back <laughs> to the mother and I'm like, yeah, this is my child tenfold. She so. gets that from your husband, right? Not <laughs> right, from totally. You. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh it's just a series of really fun little conversations. Again, very quick read, very um 
lighthearted, just something to make you laugh. Because I found that when I was pregnant that so many people like to try to scare you by telling huh? you, yeah, <laughs> telling you like, oh, you know, have you thought about this? And what about this? And trying to make you worry about your pregnancy and your being a new mom. And I was like, I just want to laugh. I just want to be, I just want to enjoy this experience. Right. So I kind of wrote that for myself initially. And then I thought, well, why not share it? Because I did share some of the conversations and it seemed like people were really laughing on social media. So I, I just figured why not turn it into a book? I, I love that idea. How did you actually come up with that idea though? So I am part of um, the writing community on Twitter, which is amazing. They're very supportive. And There's a writing community on Twitter, too? Yes, there is. We're, writers Man. are everywhere. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> yes. Um, and so they had these. They have these writing prompts, you know, every single day. And one of the writing prompts was conversations, like have mm -hmm. conversations. So I started having these conversations. And then there you go. The next thing I knew, there were several of them. And... I just put them all together into With this the book. baby while she was in the womb. Yes. Yeah. So everything, all those conversations were while I was pregnant. So it was everything that I was envisioning for her personality, and it is her today. So <laughs> That is, you know what? You have, that, that's, I've never heard of that. That's a great idea. Thank you. You want to turn that into a podcast. Oh. And, and, and actually get other mothers that are expecting on there. Mm -hmm. And I, I, cause to me, that sounds like it's good therapy. Cause especially if you've got all these people telling you all this negative stuff. Yes. And then here you are talking to your, talking to your daughter while she's in the womb. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know a lot of people say, you know, to, to, to when they talk to the baby, they're always, um, it, it's like a one way conversation. Right. Yeah. But you're having a conversation to where it's, you know, she's talking, granted, I mean, she's not actually talking back, Yeah. but that's the way it's coming across. Mm -hmm. And, oh my God, I never knew you wrote that. And when did, you, when did that come out? Yeah, so I released that in 2019. So my okay. first, my, so Sheldon's Time, which is my children's book, that's really the first book I've been actively promoting. My other two books I was very quiet about, so it doesn't Why? surprise me. Because I had such an inferiority complex. Like, I was, I was a person, I've had very high anxiety my entire life. So okay. I had this whole like, well, who am I to be able to write a book? Or who am I to say that I can do that? So when I released them, it was very, very quiet. So I would tell like people that I, you know, like my immediate circle, but I wasn't doing anything like this. Like there was no podcast, there was no interviews, there was nothing to push it out to the world because right. I was just so insecure within my own writing. And now luckily the whole process with Sheldon has given me so much confidence that okay. I'm able to promote him. And I figured, well, when I can, I'll share my other two as well. But usually it's a surprise for people because they're like, oh, I didn't know you were anything before this. So, so. did you have you always gone through anxiety? Yeah, I definitely would say my entire life. I've had it. You're know, looking back. Of course, I didn't know that I wasn't right. diagnosed until my 20s. Um, but the, looking back, absolutely. It was my entire life. So what actually helped you get through that, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, absolutely. It's been a combination of okay. things. It's been a journey. So I first went to therapy when I was 19. Mm -hmm. And um, however, I would say it was more recently, a, a little over five years now, I actually went through a very significantly hard period with it. And it took me, it took me to essentially to rock bottom. And I had to seek help. And so when I finally sought help. It was a combination of spiritual therapy, medication. I was doing regular therapy. I was doing like the whole gamut. So it was right. sort of like a well-rounded approach. But I started to like learn things about like, okay, the things I'm eating actually affect my anxiety. Mm -hmm. The things that I'm drinking affect my anxiety. You know, what I'm choosing, how I'm choosing to spend my energy affected. And then I also, fortunately for me, it's much more talked about these days. So I was yeah. able to find like other people that were talking about it. And I, I actually had a book um, called Shadows in the Sun that changed my life. I read that when I was in my, uh, kind of the beginning of my mental health recovery. And so that book, reading, reading that author's story and hearing firsthand how she was able to get herself on the other side really helps me 
you know, see that there was a light at the end of the tunnel because right. at that stage I wasn't seeing it or feeling it. I just sort of had to believe something that wasn't necessarily there for me. But luckily, as time went on and as I got myself access to these amazing people and resources, I started to see it and to feel it. But I would say number one for me was absolutely my spiritual journey. Um, okay. just my personal faith um, that I have now is what's really given me the strength. Mm-hmm. So I would say, you know, really make some major breakthroughs. Um, but then, of course, the other things have been immensely helpful as well, like the therapy and the medication and right. resources. Yeah. And now mm-hmm. you have no problem getting out there talking. No. Yeah. I love it. Now I just won't <clears throat> stop talking. <laughs> See, and years ago when I met you, I would have never known that. Yeah, I hit it pretty well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I was definitely like when I was going to my first I look back now and I'm like, I cringe, you know, because uh, when I first went to therapy, I remember that I was literally like hiding. Like yeah. I went, they had it in, I was at college, away at college, and they had it at the student center. And I was very involved in campus. I was just very active, very involved. So again, you would never think right. that, you know, I had these issues under the surface but you know that my truth was that i was going to class every single day and having panic attacks nobody nobody saw it um i was a master at hiding it and so when i you were good at hiding the panic attacks yeah wow Mm -hmm. yep yeah i was i was sitting there feeling like i couldn't breathe like my heart was you know felt like it was stopping and i would like sit there and i'd be like sweating and you know, and I would look around me and I would think that it was so obvious, yeah. but then nobody else would even notice that anything was going on with me. So I equated to, um, you know, one time I told my story and I said, you know, I felt like I had an invisible plastic bag over my head and I was suffocating, but nobody else could see the bag. Wow. I, I've never envisioned it like that. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I had the panic attacks really bad as well. Mm. And I guess my wife and daughter really didn't. I guess they didn't notice either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they would, um, but yeah, and what scared me the most was the high heart rate. Yes. I mean, because I thought I was having a heart attack. That's what it felt like. And I, right. and a lot of people that go through the panic attacks feel that. Now, did you go through depression as well? So I've only been diagnosed with generalized anxiety. Okay. But I would say what I went through uh, was absolutely, it got to the point of, pretty severe where I was having thoughts about, you know, should I even be alive anymore? Mm -hmm. Like we were, you know, I was trending in that direction. And that's when I really realized, okay, I actually had to stop my life. So I actually stopped my life for a week. I stopped working. I just spent that time in just treatment. That's all I did. And I just would go to treatment and I would sleep and I would cry. So those were like my three things that I was doing. And so that was like the most intense. But, you know, prior to that, it's like everything that I was doing was in private. Like I was, Mm -hmm. you know, really there was a lot of emotional things happening for me. But that was about a year and a half that led up to that sort of crisis point for me. Um, And then coming out of that, one of the techniques that I used, fortunately, was writing. So that's when I wrote the things that ultimately came to found in faith that's when i first wrote sheldon's story he's actually started out as a poem that Mm -hmm. i wrote um and i started getting these ideas for these kids books and i started visualizing myself having a children's book and that too helped me because it made me feel like that there is a purpose for me and that i'm meant to do something um so having having those sort of you know visualizations came to come to mind really helped my recovery as well that's awesome and and thank you for sharing that because Mm -hmm. i if you if you listen to the podcast, I, I talk to people a lot that have gone through or you know that are going through mental health. Yeah, I don't want to say have gone through it because I think it's always there. Um, mm-hmm. But I I love the fact that people are now talking about it because it's helping others. And um, the one thing I have noticed though, a lot of authors have gone through either anxiety or depression or both. Mm-hmm. Authors and musicians and artists. Yes. Which it, it's, it, to me, it's kind of wild because they're very creative. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, do you say thank you for mental health or no, stay away? But so Sh- Sheldon's time, and it, this blows me away. You said it's taking you five years. Yeah. To do this? Yeah. It's, I, you know, it's first he was a poem. Okay. And I didn't even have a name for him. I just called him Krabby because I knew Krabby. 
I knew he was a crab. And then I was like, well, wait, this doesn't feel right because he doesn't have a crabby personality. He's very nice. Um, so I didn't like that name, but I just didn't know what to call him. And then I thought about it. And I'm just such a sucker for wordplay that I love, you know, Sheldon. He has a shell. So I like, there you go. Oh, you're right. <laughs> okay. I thought you were a Big Bang Theory pr- no. uh, you know, fan or something no. at first. Okay. I just, I love that. I yeah. would have never thought about that. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, it was his story, and then his friends sort of emerged from it, and just from all the experience, like, once I decided that I really wanted him to be a children's book, I immersed myself into the world of children's book writing, so I learned a Which lot. Which is a big difference, isn't it? Oh, my it? gosh, it's yeah. huge. Yeah, you you go from, like, thinking, oh, yeah, that looks like something easy to write. Right. You'd be like, oh, actually, it's not at all. <laughs> it's very, there's a whole craft to it, and... So much to learn if you want to do it the right way, you know. My yeah. Um, well, yeah, because you got you have to. Depending on what age group you're writing for, I guess in a way you have you have to be able to read like your their age. That didn't sound right. I know. But, I saying, mean, you're yeah. writing. You you have to write so that you know that age group is able to read it. Exactly. So you can't use some of these big words. No. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, which is you know, like if you like took your other two books and tried to turn it into a children's book, wow. probably would not be, be able to do it. No, definitely not. So, yeah. I mean, I, I love that. Sh- I, I would have never thought about that, that <laughs> Sheldon with the shell. Right, that right. Is, so who are some of the other characters in here? Because I want to hear their names too. Yeah. I mean, okay. I'm, I'm looking through the book. I'm seeing the seagull and the tortoise, but yep, I think okay. they've had to have special names. Oh, absolutely. So <laughs> his two friends are Sully and Stella. So Stella is a starfish, and then Sully is a seagull. Okay. Wait, are you a big fan of... God, the name went am I? Bun- SpongeBob? Oh, no, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just wondering. Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> Stella and Sully. Stella and Sully. Yep. So, okay. Yep. So Stella actually means star. So that one, I knew that I oh. wanted, yeah, I knew that I wanted all three of them to have an S name just for right. consistency. Um, so I thought, well, that's easy. Stella means star. There you go, starfish. Um, and then Sully just came out because of it's kind of like Sully is sort of like gull. Like, so he's a seagull. So that's why ah, I picked Sully. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And well, they have their own stories as well. So I'm hoping if things go well with Sheldon, that their stories will be out there. I next. was wondering about that. Yeah. If, you were, if there were going to be some follow up books to, well you have to right i i mean i'm that's what i'm hoping i see it i saw it there's when no I first... hoping about it Lindsay. you have <laughs> i will to. i will yes when i first when i wrote sheldon his friends emerged and then their stories emerged and i'm like oh i kind of see this series so i saw the series of three right um, in my head so that's where i'm eventually that's where i'm heading all right so you got to look at a children's book and actually all books especially if you want to make a series look at it as a a record album Mm-hmm. Look at how many musicians have put out albums, but nobody knew about them or started buying their other albums until like the third or fourth album came out. Mm, that's a good so point. Look, look at it that way, because even if you have one person, 1,000 people, a million people read the book, somebody's going to read it. Mm-hmm. No matter what, right. and then they're going going to. I I don't want to read the end, the end out loud, but I mean, um, you know, just re- looking at the characters and everything, you know, the kids are going to want to see more. Yes, I I know that I, that's the way I am. I, I I cannot stand reading a book or listening to a book and then getting to the end, and you know, there's you know, you have that cliffhanger, or you learn about other characters and you want to learn more mm-hmm. and then the author doesn't bring it out another book is like no <laughs> right. Come Why on, did you leave me <laughs> right. and my daughter did that to me because she, ah. she goes off community college and they were doing a writing course so I think, what was the course they had to write so many words in so much time or something like that and they were given a i guess uh I don't know what you call it, subject or whatever. So anyway, she's reading this story to my wife and I at the dinner table and talking about how the woman is on the front porch. But she, the way she painted the picture, you could tell it's like on a big farmland and everything. Mm-hmm. And then here comes the pickup truck with the music playing and you can see the guy's 
arm hanging out the window and then the truck comes to a stop and that was it <laughs> and i'm like who the hell was in the truck right she goes well no dad it was just a writing exercise this, this is, i said okay but who was in the truck right what so then her was it a week later she had to do another exercise and she's reading that to us i'm like well, wait a minute, where the hell's the guy in the truck? She goes, what? What guy in the truck? I said, from your last one. She goes, he's not in the... I said, well, I don't care about this one. I want to know. I'm. St- it, it left me hanging. Yeah. I still don't know what happened. Uh-huh. I was like, Grace, you have a story here. Right. right? And people don't realize sometimes just that short little thing, you read it to somebody like me and you grab my attention. I want to know what happened. Right. Absolutely. So, so the kids are going to want to know about the seagull and the starfish. I was getting ready to say squirrel. <laughs> well, that'd SpongeBob's be got a squirrel in right, it. So, right. <laughs> but what about the? Because I see a turtle in yes, here. Yes. So he is a random. That was like a random ad. And as we were developing the book, so what's great about self-publishing is you get you know you, you're it's your full. Like that's like sort of my master project with my illustrator. So we're working page by page and designing this whole thing, which is so okay. fun. And so one of the scenes that I had written was about him sending a letter and we were going back and forth and we said, well, why don't we have a character sort of deliver this letter? So we have this turtle mailman in there <laughs> and he's super cute. I love him. Um, and this in this particular story, he, he plays a very small role. However, you never know. I mean, after the... Th- after the three, he could he could develop into something more. I was going to say, I see, I see two other characters here. Mm. The turtle. Mm-hmm. And who did he send the letter to? Well, he sent the letter to his friends, um, Stella and Sully. Oh. So, yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, what if that letter, letter got intercepted? Ooh. You know how mail works. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. At one point, I mean, I, I've... I've probably have about 500 editions of Sheldon's time on my desktop and I feel like one of those five at least one of the 500 does have a dolphin in it because I thought about adding a fourth and I like no nah, I took her I did I did it she was female I saw her as female um but I did take her out um but you know you never know she could come back well that, and that's a great thing about when you're doing something like this and then let's say the next book you're talking about Sully's time mm-hmm. and then you could always introduce another character that's true, right? You know, there could and, be, and technically, yeah. you already did in this one with the turtle. You just didn't give the turtle a name. Exactly, right? There's some there's some mystery there. Exactly, which there could be more coming. But yeah, the next one um, is going to be Stella's Wish, so that'll be her book, and then the third one will be Sully's Adventure. So that's just to give you a little tease for okay. a little bit about their personalities and what's coming for them. Oh my God. But it's completely different than Sheldon's story. The only thing, obviously, that's in, you know, the same would be that all three of them are going to be in each other's books. Okay. But they all have very different stories. I love this because, it, and especially since you're already thinking about expanding, and God knows with an adventure book, you're going to run into all types of characters, or you can. Right. That's um, very true. Mm-hmm. But you got something else included in this book. So yeah. tell everybody about the the pieces of paper that you have in here. Yeah. So anyone, which I love because kids need this. Right. That's <laughs> what I was thinking. Well, anyone that orders the book for me, I, I include little surprises. So I liked. I came up with a pirate definitions <laughs> um, page, <laughs> and you know, because I use some pirate terminology in the book. Sheldon's a big pirate fan, so he's reading a pirate book actually in his book. So there's actually two books in one if you think about it. Um, so he really gets immersed in the book. He has a very active imagination, and he actually talks like a pirate as well throughout the book. So I just thought, well, why not just have a little vocabulary sheet to help kids understand what exactly he's saying and what that right. means in the pirate world. <laughs> so you get that and then there's also a coloring page because i mean everybody loves to color oh yeah yeah have you looked into seeing if there's anybody out there because you know how you can get swag to shirts and all me yes have you looked to see if anybody can make a stuffed sheldon yeah i i'm that's definitely on my list i want i truthfully i want it for myself (laughs) i think it could be a good gift set with the book right right exactly yeah so i have i have definitely thought about that it's hard because as a parent myself i'm like my kid has so many stuffed animals so i'm like i don't know if that you know i don't know if i found the quite 
the right thing, but it's right. definitely on my mind. I did get, I have a t-shirt that I had made from a local Habit of Grace business um, with the book cover on it. So mm-hmm. he's on there, which, what, is, which is fun. What's the business? Give him a plug. Yeah, it's Stick Design in downtown um, Habit of Grace. And I've Gabby. Never heard of them. Are yeah. they new? Um, no, they've been around for, I don't know exactly how long, but at, at least a little bit. And they are fantastic. And Gabby is the go-to t-shirt person. She just Stick. makes magic. Design. Yes. S T I C K. Yep. It's all one word. Stick design. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Let's take a little break so I can talk about our sponsor, Freedom Federal Credit Union. Somebody asked me a while ago about opening up a business account. They had just started a business, and I told them to check out Freedom Federal Credit Union. Of course, they weren't sure if their business qualified because it's just them. It's a sole proprietorship. Well, guess what? Sole proprietor. LLC, corporation, partnership, nonprofit, organization, club, or even an unincorporated association, you can apply for a business account with Freedom Federal Credit Union. If you're located in Harford or Baltimore County, you're eligible for membership with Freedom. And it's very simple to open up an account. All you need is your employee identification number, a mailing and physical address of the business, and a personal identification for each signer. And guess what? Here's the best part. Guess how much it takes to open up an account? One dollar. That's right. You can start a business account with only one dollar at Freedom Federal Credit Union. I've been with different banks and credit unions. This is definitely the best financial institution I've ever been a member of, and I love it. Just go to Freedom fcu.org again that's freedom fcu.org look for a branch near you go sign up whether you want your personal account or business account or both it's definitely the place to go to and they are federally insured by the ncua and trust me when i tell you this it'll be the best decision you ever made I, I never heard about them. Yeah, they're like, fantastic. Where, about, where are they located in Henry Green? They are right on St. John Street. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm looking for a shirt company. A oh, yeah. I would company. definitely recommend her. Without Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I know I could, like my last ones I ordered on, you know, you can create them online and order them yourself. Right, but it just feels better to support local. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly how I feel. And, and, and she's great. She's so nice. She's just so easy to work with and she'll send you you know if you have a design like i told her hey i want my my book cover right. on the front of my shirt and here's the wording i want it says ask me about my book <laughs> so i told her what i wanted and then she designed it for me and she said oh you know send it to me for approval and she's right. very efficient and she's very she's very nice to work with as well see and i love the fact that on the papers you have the qr codes thank you and yeah something that i did my wife said it was cheesy but just another idea for you talking about t-shirts. So when I got, I, got, I had a t-shirt made up for the podcast, just one. I wanted to see what it would be like. Mm-hmm. So on the front is the logo. Okay. And on the back, it says scan this and it's the QR code. Ah, cool. Self-marketing. Yeah. But something to think about for your you know, t-shirts or whatever. If you're at a festival, best place to wear your t-shirt may look kind of weird if people are coming up behind you with their phone, but, you know. But, right, you, hey, if you <laughs> yeah. leads to the marketing, like you said, that's a really good idea. Or maybe you want to put on, well, I don't know if you want to put on there, if you have kids scan this, because that just, that could, oh. yeah, yeah, just say <laughs> scan right, this or something that fine line. Like that. <laughs> But it, it's, it, what, I love it because with, and with your book, you said you got some hidden things in there. Mm-hmm. And in the marketing, even if you do that, yeah, because you say you're, well, you're doing the podcast now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to be at the Authors and Artists Show. Yeah, I actually have two events prior to that, too. So I'm, Really? I'm, yeah. Um, McGregor's and Habit of Grace, they are absolutely wonderful, so supportive. And so my first event's going to be there next Wednesday, um, so September 28th. And we're doing, like, dinner and a craft. And oh. every child that comes and purchases a ticket they'll get a book too and they'll obviously all be there to sign their books and talk to them and right so it's gonna oh, be really awesome. yeah it's gonna be a really fun evening and then the other event that i have lined up is october 22nd and that's at the maritime museum in habit of grace oh. um 
Do you live? I take it you live in Havre de Grace. I do. I okay. love Havre de Grace, and Sheldon loves Havre de Grace too. Because um, <laughs> he loves supportive. the water. Yeah, exactly. Um, and a portion of proceeds from all the sales of Sheldon's time do benefit the Maritime Museum as well. So, oh, that's great. Yeah, I wanted to do something environmental, and they're just a fantastic organization. Oh, yeah, so they are. That's going to be really fun because we're going to do a scavenger hunt. Oh. Yeah. So we're going to have, like, I actually have a pirate wheel that I'm going to be taking with me to these events because apparently. She... Oh, steering wheel. Yeah. A ship's wheel. Yeah, okay. ship's wheel. Yeah. So it's like, it's on a stand. I had a friend who was very crafty be able to make me a stand. So you can and... spin it. Yep. So you can spin it. You can take pictures with it. Um, so we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm excited. It actually didn't. No, they don't have the pirate ship up there. I know there's been a pirate ship that's. Going up there oh right, before. in Habit of Grace, right? Yeah. Yes, I. Yep, I know. The next time we're gonna, <laughs> I'll have to be like, hey. Kn- there may be a couple of them that are around. Mm-hmm. Where I mean, they're not real pirate ships, but they're th- decorated to look like pirate ships. Right. Now, yeah. have you talked to Mary Hassler or anybody about going and doing signings or anything at the libraries? Yeah, I'm actually. I'm trying to get Children's Time into the library. I mailed a copy to the local author uh, part of the Bel Air Library, so I. From okay. what I oh, saw, okay. that was like sort of stage one of the. Right. <laughs> um, but I'm really hoping that, you know, he'll be able to expand beyond that as well and maybe get into other libraries in Harvard oh, County. Great. And the schools. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the elementary schools. Yeah. Would be great. Uh, who would you talk to for that? I'm not sure. I haven't yeah. quite figured that out yet. But actually, I, you know, of course, would love to do classroom visits as well. But I know yeah. um, I, I did have a school counselor say to me that she wanted to use it in her office. And that made me really excited because, of course, you know, my my personal connection to mental health, but also just that's where I see this book's sort of superpower mm-hmm. is that Sheldon is an introvert. And I know a lot of times introverts just tend to sometimes they feel alone. And so in writing this, I really wanted to give them something to feel like, hey, I'm not alone, you know, um, and it's OK if I need some time to myself. That's healthy and that's OK. And I that doesn't mean that I don't like my friends. It doesn't right. mean that I'm a mean person, because I think the more I thought about it, you know, a lot of these um, characters in other books I've seen, they tend to be more on the, oh, I don't want to be around you side. Like their personality is is not necessarily the nicest. Right. So Sheldon is a very nice and caring and thoughtful introvert. So I thought it was important to sort of bring his side to light just in case any other children can relate to him as well. So the character Sheldon, is, is Sheldon, um, I guess... Did you come up with his character from somebody you actually know, or is it a combination of people? Yeah, so Sheldon is definitely a part of me. Okay. Um, the way that I, my writing works, typically I'll have what feels like a character talking to me in my head, and then I write it down. So, I, you know, that's what happened when I first wrote his poem down, and then I really liked his story, and I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. And I thought, I haven't seen this before in children's books, because normally you don't talk about children needing or wanting alone time normally Mm -hmm. it's the opposite like oh you know they're together with their friends or they're together with their family which is all good but you don't see the other side of it that maybe they do need some time to process things alone and that's okay um so when i when i started looking at it and really kind of diving deep and developing the story further i realized that i was actually writing a part of myself in the story um because that was me as a kid i would need that time to process alone and i would usually be writing so for me like in this story he's reading but i would typically be writing even as a child and i would often do that by myself so you were writing back when you were a kid yeah wow uh yeah now during actually during school jump back a little bit since you said during when you were a kid you were writing Mm -hmm. did you take any writing courses in high school no, I really did not actively explore <laughs> writing at all until later adulthood. Like even in college, I didn't intentionally seek out writing courses. Now really? I was going out on my college campus and I was writing by myself, but I didn't right. want to share anything. <laughs> so I was more like, you know, when you and I were talking about your daughter not sharing it, that's I could relate because that was me. Okay. Like I, didn't want, I didn't want anybody to read what I was writing. So I would just be writing on my own and nobody even knew necessarily that I was writing. Um, and it wasn't until, gosh, really, I joined the Harco Writers Group. That was the first time that I actually was sharing my writing with anybody else. So we're talking that was about. you came out of your shell, no pun intended. Well, yeah, actually, that wasn't pun, <laughs> pun intended. Yeah. And that was probably about, gosh, six and a half years ago now that I joined that. So it took a oh, while. Oh, really? Yeah, it took a while to. 
So I was in my 30s when I, yeah. Huh? <laughs> I thought you were in your 20s now. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, so what about the other two, Stella and Sully? Yeah, so they kind of emerged. So I knew that he had friends right out of the gate. So I knew okay. that he was going to have these friends sort of interrupt him because they they have their own motive. They want him to come out and play. There's your them. husband. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, so they sort of have their own intentions, and they mean well, right. but they don't realize, hey, wait a minute, you know, we're not really giving him the space that he wants. So there, it creates this whole dynamic of trying to figure out what am I going to do? And so for Sheldon, you know, he is a good friend. He is very caring. He's very thoughtful. So he doesn't want to just say, you know, no, get out of here. That's not his personality. Um, so he really tries, he struggles to figure out, am I doing something wrong? or what should I do and that was something that I felt like was important to convey um, right you know to show that there is a lot of thoughtfulness that happens and there's a lot of like you know internal struggle and I think particularly for those of us that have anxiety you know we can relate to that because we often feel the push and the pull of you know well wait a minute this person wants me to do this but I want to do this so yeah. what am I supposed to do and it's like this overthinking you know so you can kind of sense that from him in the book that he he does think a lot about things so, with this, with Sheldon's time, because actually this is just released September, right? Oh, August 8th. August. So, yeah, okay. it's my August. favorite number, so I, I had to do 8-8. 8-8 eight, eight. <laughs> eight, eight is your, was that when your daughter was born? So, she was born on the 18th, so she did get the 8 in there. Okay. My, my birthday's on the 8th of December, and she's November 18th, so. Oh, I'm, so just 8 your favorite eight, number. Yes, 8 is my favorite okay, number. Okay, yep. okay. Mm-hmm. I thought you meant like eight eight. Oh, August I gotcha. 8th was your yeah. favorite number? Yeah. Um, I got God, I forget the, the numbers threw me off now. <laughs> oh, website. Do you actually have a website? Yeah. For, so okay. I've been mainly using like social media. So mm-hmm. I have Facebook, Instagram. I'm Lindsay P. Writes. I was I was such a I'm such an old soul that I had to like drag my feet onto Instagram. But I am on there now. So I'm like I'm a newbie on Instagram. <laughs> um, just a few weeks uh, that my account's been up. So I've been primarily using that because it seems like that's where people sort of flock to. Right. Um, and I do have a site that I developed on Wix as well, but I don't have my custom domain yet, so it's a little bit long. So I could definitely share that with you too. You um, don't have a custom. Oh, you don't have your own domain, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why not? <laughs> I've been just dragging my feet because I'm like, it's just the monthly fee. I'm like, I don't know what am monthly I gonna- fee. Yeah. What are you talking about? Through Wix for a domain name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You should only have to pay for the domain name once a year, and that's usually anywhere between fifteen to twenty dollars. Oh, nice. Okay, I'll have to figure that out. Oh, you and I I'm have done. to talk yeah. when we're done here. Okay. Uh, maybe it's because <laughs> Wix wants to charge a fee for the website. That's. I think that's probably what it is. But they should still give you an annual fee. Mm. I mean, that's because yeah, you want your links on there. So people can purchase it from, what, it's strictly Amazon, right? Yeah, well, people can get it directly through me. If oh, they okay. Wanna, yeah, if they want to have it personalized. Um, so I would be able to write a message to them right. or their child, whoever it was that they'd like the book to go to. And then that way I can include the coloring sheet and the pirate definition page as well. Um, but, of course, Amazon, it is available there as well. I wonder if you could set up like an Etsy page or whatever. I might, that, yeah. And then just get it. The domain, like Lindsay P. writes, mm-hmm. and have it point to your Etsy site. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Something like I know. I do have to figure out more of this technology thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's funny because when I was bringing, when I was launching Sheldon, one of the techniques that I learned from other self published authors is you do a free ebook. So that's kind of like a yeah. big promo when you launch and then you ask for reviews to sort of help bump your book. So I had all the intentions of the world, I had set myself up. And there was just one technology issue after the other with my ebook. And I was like, what in the world? I was so frustrated. And then I thought about it and I thought, you know what? This is Sheldon's fault because <laughs> he is so old school. He's like, I want the book in my hands. And I basically realized it was him telling me. Claws. He, in his claws. In his claws. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. And he, it was basically him telling me, you know, I don't want the ebook. It's too technology. I'm not ready for that. And I'm like, fine. Now he does have an ebook now, but he was very slow to warm up to the idea of an ebook. <laughs> he wants a pirate, Matt. That's what he wants. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, pirates never had ebooks. So yeah. he's like, what is this? Yeah. They had the journals. No, not journals. 
ca- the captain's log. Yeah, yes. that was Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> no, they did. They had a log yeah, they book. Had, yeah. yeah, okay. Like a <sighs> scroll, maybe. I don't know. God, there are so there, and and that's what I love about this because there are so many things you could branch off with this. I mean, you got the two papers in here. Mm-hmm. You could do a a captain's journal. Uh, that's true. The stuffed Sheldon, mm-hmm. even little pirate boats. Right. Well, that's actually one of the things we're doing at Maritime is they are they use um, corks and they do recycled pirate ships. What? Super fun. So, yeah, because they're, of course, all about the environment. So, yeah, that's one of the things that they do. Uh, They have it now if you visit the museum. But if you come to the event, that's one of the fun things that we're going to get into. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Mm hmm. There's something else I'm learning. Yeah. So. Actually, is there anything else you wanted to say about Sheldon? Because I want to ask you about something else now. No, I think um, that's pretty much everything. And I just really hope that people love the story oh, and that will. makes them smile. And I they mean, will. it makes me smile. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you love him as well. Well, and that's just it. Because I think as a writer, if you're smiling when you're writing and you're feeling it in your heart, then other people will. Yes. Because. Yes. I, I, I I know of authors that they'll say they wrote something, but they didn't like that part. Right. They, okay, well, why did they take it out? Now, granted, I know some of them with the novels, it's the editors. Mm-hmm. The editors yes. that change things. Yes. You know, but if you don't like it, then I would go back to that editor and say, well, no, I'm not feeling good about this. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, I mean, you, you, you feel good about all of this. Absolutely. And, and what, I'm sorry, what's the illustrator's name again? Yeah, Nadia Bolas. She's okay. she's incredible. Yeah. Now, you're going to bring her on for, for the other seven books following <laughs> I mean, I, I truly hope she's still available because right. she's she's also become quite popular. So hopefully she'll still be available for me. I told her, I said, I want you for at least <laughs> Stella and Sully because you've developed these adorable characters. So, so your other two books, Fan of Faith, and then was it conversation? Wisdom from the womb. Wisdom from the womb. Mm-hmm. Um, which, oh my God, I, I just love that. And I'm sitting here thinking because with wisdom from the womb, you're having you know a conversation with your daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, but with the mental health, and you had this idea for Sheldon already in your head. Are you? Are you? Have you thought about writing a book about mental health? Yes, I definitely. Conversations within your head. Oh, there's a title. That is a title. <laughs> no, I haven't thought about it from that angle, but I like that because I mean, yeah. you. I, I mean, you. You went through it. I went through it, and you do. You have a lot of conversations within yourself. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. I just think something like, and there are more books out there. There's definitely a lot of podcasts out there about it. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's, I don't think there's a limit to how much you can have out there for it. Oh, absolutely Especially not. Especially since it's on a rise. Right. And there's, and it's going to be like one person's message is going to resonate with somebody and then somebody exactly. else is going to, because I know for me, it's like when I was in that space, I was looking for like, okay, who, you know, who can I go to or what can I read? Mm-hmm. And of course there were things that didn't resonate with me, but then there were other things that really, like I told you, changed my life. So yeah. it's like, so yeah, I, I do think about the impact that that particular author of Shadows in the Sun had on my life. And I think, wow. You know, if I could even get close to that for somebody, that would be astounding. That would just be. I think you should. Yeah. That um, would. Yeah. And you can, in a way, you could actually do it like you did with the Found in Faith book. Mm-hmm. You know, just interview different people that, you know, are going through mental health. Right. And their stories. Because everybody's different. And I've, I have found out a lot of people I've talked to, what's helped them is a book. Yes. And. Uh-huh. You know, it just, I, I think you, I think you have something there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I see a lot of different series going on for you. You got Sheldon series, you have conversation series. Uh Uh-huh. Can't really do a chicken soup series, so you would have. (laughs) uh, That idea is taken. (laughs) I guess you could say like an inspirational series. Right, right. Or whatever. But I, I just think that would be something that, you know, a lot of. It's something. It's something else that people need, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, and in a way, I can see Sheldon's time actually helping some kids. Thank because you. Because even young kids, 
you know, are going through something, but they don't really know how to tell somebody about it. Exactly. Yes. That, that's very challenging for children. And that's, that was one of my hopes for Sheldon was that they would be like, oh. And and also I had uh, a few parents really react well because they said to me, well, you know, I'm an extrovert, but my child is an introvert. Mm-hmm. So maybe this book will help me understand them. And I loved that. Um, you know, or it could be vice versa. You right. could be an introvert parent and your child is an extrovert. And you're like, how do I get myself five minutes alone? Um, you know, which I know as a mom of a toddler is not always the easiest thing. Right. But, you know, you could just say, you know, have them reach out in time and have them start to understand the value of alone time and learning how to play independently, which is which is a great skill and it's very healthy. See, and not only that, you think, I mean, because we talked about how like Sheldon's time could help the child, Mm -hmm. but it could help the parent as well. Absolutely. Yes. So it's Mm -hmm. like full circle. Right. That's right. Yeah. So God, Lindsay, I didn't realize that you did all this. I mean, how long have we known each other now? <laughs> it's been several years, yeah. But I was—I told you I was very quiet. About you were, <laughs> but I wish I would have known about this earlier because I—I I think this is. I love the fact that you're coming out talking about it now, and you're mm-hmm. writing, and in a way, Sheldon is you telling your story in a way. Yes. Um, the other two definitely are. You know, was mm-hmm. wisdom, wisdom from the womb, and. Well, found of faith is a combination. Yes. But still, it, it's, I, yeah, we got to get you on the website. We got, we got to get you set up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm you, ready. <laughs> you need that place where you can sell all your books and right. help more people. Um, one of the things I, because we keep talking about your book in Hartford County. We mm-hmm. keep focusing on that. Right. Have you reached out to any other counties or any, even outside of Maryland? Yeah, I actually do have a book event coming up in Pasadena. So I'm excited about that. Um, That was a connection that one of my, you know, I have to say that the independent author community is just so wonderful. So we all really help each other. So that was a connection I made through one of my friends who's also a independently published author. Her series is Wolf Books or her Facebook page. Um, She's fantastic. So I just wanted to throw in a quick plug for her while I was here. Um, But she's in Howard County. And so she helped me with that particular connection. And so, yes, that's been on my kind of goals. And uh, I actually next I really want to. I'm hoping that to get him closer to Ocean City. So there's a few stores down there ah. that I really want to be. Because, you know, he's of course, wants a to be crab. by the beach. So I'll be there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's sort of where I'm kind of aiming next. So at home, mm-hmm. do you have the ability to do a podcast virtually? I would, yes. I would just have to figure out. But I do. I, I would have. I you have, have a webcam and a microphone. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to. Give you, or actually, it's probably easier if you email me. I'm going to give you a couple sites to where you can reach out to different podcasters. Oh, great. That are looking for guests. Okay. So you can get on their show because I think with this, it needs to go everywhere. Oh, thank you. And that would definitely help. And there's a lot of different podcasts out there that they're looking to talk to different authors and children's authors. And I mentioned to you before about the, I want to do a round table with Walter. Yes. And I'm I definitely want that. you on for that. I would love to be a part um, of that. And if there's any contacts I can hook you up with, just let me know. Okay. I mean, it's, um, I, this is great. And you're, I'm, now I'm going to have to get the other two. I don't believe I never got the Phantom Faith book. <laughs> I know, right? Um, <laughs> But that's on that's on Amazon, right? Yes. Okay, uh-huh. I, I, and th- I can't wait to read Wisdom from the Womb. Yes. That just sounds like it, it's going to be just a, an amazing. Now you got to do a you got to do a follow up for that too. <laughs> I'm going to be busy. <laughs> Wisdom outside of the womb. Oh, you know, ooh, oh my yes, god! Because I can you, write all the things that she's actually saying now. <laughs> yes. And, and right. I, I'm sorry. What is your daughter's name? Her name's Brielle. Brielle. Yeah. Ooh, I love that. That's Thank pretty, you. That's pretty neat. And then, yeah, and then you can give it to her when she's, as she gets older. Oh, she's I know. And then she'll read. be like, Mom. <laughs> she'll yeah. probably roll her eyes and be like, oh, my gosh, how embarrassing. <laughs> and, and then she'll write a book as she gets older, Things My Mom Got Wrong When I Was In the world. All right. That's going to be a really long book. <laughs> that's going to be like a I analogy. never said that while I was in there, Mom. 
<laughs> Jeez. Lindsay, do you have anything to add? No, just thank you so much for be, for letting me be a part of this. Oh, it's, it's my so pleasure. so much fun, and I'm so glad we could connect uh, again, and I'm um, just looking forward to I know you're, you're so busy. I'm looking forward to everything that you're continuing to do here in the county. And, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Um, it, it's still I'm still not growing my hair back from it. <laughs> now I, I, I want to wish you you know continued success. I love what you're doing and I can't wait to see the other ones come out and uh, when I do when we do the round table one, um, I'm not hundred percent sure when that's going to be because that's probably gonna be one of the biggest round table ones I've done in yeah. a long time. And actually, let me ask you this. I told you we did the roundtable discussion for mental health. Yes. And that's something we're planning on doing possibly twice a year. Would you like to come on for that as well? Absolutely, yes. Perfect. I'm in. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, Lindsay, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And uh, tell your husband I said hi and get the baby. It's not a baby anymore. (laughs) She's always my baby, though. Well, yeah, that's true. So (laughs) give her a big kiss for me. Well, do. Thank you so (laughs) much. Thanks. I want to thank Lindsay for coming on this episode and make sure that you get her books. And actually, if you have an event coming up, contact her. Ask her to come set up and uh, sell some of her books, too. Another way of supporting local artists, you know. So the podcast that I found, it's called Parenting and Bonding with Children's Books. It's the Aiden's Books podcast. It's hosted by Queen Cummings, the mom behind Aiden's Books. And I'm just going to read right from the website what this podcast is about. Join us on our quest to uncover how children's books can bring us closer to our children. This podcast will be an honest unraveling of what story time is meant to be. Come with an open mind as we discover new authors, illustrators, and a world full of parents who just want to raise good humans. Go ahead and check out the trailer and enjoy parenting and bonding with children's books. You're listening to an Air Books Podcast. Welcome to Parenting and Bonding with Children's Books. Each Tuesday in our Facebook community, we go live to chat with the children's book author about the magic of books. Each book and author was chosen with you and your children in mind. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's Author Spotlight. If you would like to be a guest on the podcast, or if you would like to recommend somebody for me to get on the podcast, or if there's a topic you want me to talk about, just go to conversationswithrichbennett.com, click the Be a Guest link, and fill out the form, and I'll get in contact with you, and we'll get everything set up. And while you're there, please subscribe to the podcast, as well as the newsletter. And check out all my sponsors, and of course, my co-host. Please show your support for all of them as well. Until next time, my name is Rich Bennett. Stay safe and thank you for joining the conversation. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. 
They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Hill Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Hill Construction Group. Visit their website at tarhillconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Hill Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time.